Hello, welcome to Structured Change. Today we're going to share with you a question that we ask ourselves when we go and visit clients, and that is the question of, is it planning or is it scheduling? Now we don't ask that to the client, we keep that in our mind because it's very important to understand when, you, when you're in an organisation, those two capabilities are quite different. When we look at planning, we're considering the what and the how. When we're looking at scheduling, we're looking at the who and the when. For a small organisation, those two capabilities can often overlap with one person executing um, those two roles. But in a larger organisation and in the presentation that follows, you'll see how understanding those two capabilities, the people that actually execute those capabilities, and also the location of those capabilities within the organisation can have a very strong bearing on how an organisation moves towards asset management excellence. The ability to for an organisation to reflect on those two capabilities is not something that can be done from day one. It's something that you need to spend a bit of time invested with an organisation for them to truly understand the difference. Um, I suppose an open question to you watching now is, is that when you say planning or scheduling, how often do you hear the two intertwined? Well, let's take a look at this next presentation because you'll see um, how to leverage this question in your own mind, expose that question to the organisation and have them consider those two capabilities but you as a change driver, how you could actually change things or further mature things or help those people in those two roles succeed. Because planning um, next to decision making must be the most important area of an organization. And that doesn't necessarily relate only to physical assets. It could also be to intangible assets. So without further ado, let's take a look. So what you're looking at here is we refer to as the structured change framework. As you can see, it starts with the why, the what, the how, and through to the who of any change journey that you may undertake, but also too describes from a business point of view, the left to right of delivering capability or value to stakeholders. Then change that triangle slightly by color coding it, and you can see here the strategic planning of an organisation always looks at the why are we going to do something. We look at the what and the how we're going to do to achieve the why. We're in planning. And then if we look at the sequence or when or who will be doing the work or the change, we're looking at scheduling. So again, planning relies on the strategy and scheduling relies on planning. That's a very important delineation and to keep that in your mind as you move through and you assess an organisation. Looking at it a little bit differently, well the same thing as I said before from left to right. Strategy moves to planning, planning moves to scheduling and of course the delivery of value at the end of the day. And again very important that scheduling can't be completed without planning and planning you need to know what and you need to know the why before you actually define the what and the how of your change journey that's important to understand as well the the other important thing to realize is when you're with an organization is sometimes this entire function here could be centralized you may actually find that this here is actually centralized but the scheduling is decentralized, okay? That's one model as well. The main thing that you've got to be wary of is that when you actually get into this space here and there is an overlap in function between the two, and that's quite acceptable, but from a management or a leadership perspective, you really want to make sure that the defining of work and when and how the work is done isn't conflicted. For instance, if I assign some work to a particular area and then find out that they're constrained in resources, they may actually defer work. And then what happens is once that happens a few times, it becomes the norm 
and then if in a, in a maintenance environment you end up with a, a deficit slowly increasing without understanding. So that's an important one to understand. Now let's just take a look then in summary. Planning and scheduling are two different functions and you've got to understand the two and how they assist in organisational change, especially around behaviour and that cultural shift you're looking at. The other important one here is decentralised planning is very useful but it can breed local habits and a preference in work priorities we call hand to mouth. Centralised planning on the other hand is very useful but again it can dilute as we say or remove local knowledge and without that emphasis on alignment and leadership you can end up having a clinical planning process that just is disregards, if you like, local knowledge and some of the constraints and some of the um, continual improvements that one might get in a decentralised planning function. And then of course the final point which we touched on in the previous slide is you need to understand the how before the when because the difference, there is a difference between fast tracking and resource levelling um, and as you can see here with additional resources is not the same as taking shortcuts. So again, this slide was just to take a look at the difference between planning and scheduling and of course strategic planning versus planning. I hope you got something out of this slide and you're able to use what you've seen today in your real world experience.